Hello and um, welcome to my review of the NAD or, or NAD Viso 1 or Viso 1. As you can see it's, um, <coughs> it's an iPod dock and uh, this iPod dock falls into the same sort of category as the Zeppelin Air. It's, um, it's not one of the cheaper models about. I believe at release these things were nearly £500. Um, when I bought this one, this was actually um, an open box from a company called Peter Tyson. Um, this particular model I paid £300. That wasn't the price, it was £350, but I managed to haggle a little bit and get it for £300. Um, I wanted the white because it's going in my kitchen, so it, it does come in black as well. Which does look good, and to be honest, realistically I would have probably normally have bought the black. But due to the fact it was going in my kitchen, which as you can see is very, very white. And uh, she who must be obeyed obviously makes up the rules. That's why we've gone for the white version. Um, this is an, an airport system as well, so you can actually um, airport straight from your iPhone or iPod Touch or, or whichever device uh, you want to airport from because it, it isn't the, the standard Apple airport, it's actually a Bluetooth. So any sort of Bluetooth device can pretty much connect to this. And, and I've tried a few and everything I've tried has connected. The, the, as you'll notice on my dock, I've got uh, the iPod Classic. Um, the reason I actually got an iPod Classic on there is because originally when we bought this we decided to use it for airport but after a short period of time we realised that the sound quality on the dock on this particular system is worlds apart. It, it's just a worlds apart. There, there's no comparison from the Bluetooth through to what you'd hear on the dock. So I went out and bought the, the iPod um, Classic 160 and filled it up with all that music so we can leave it on there permanently. Um, which brings me round to probably my biggest complaint of the system, if I'm really honest, it's the remote. Now, the remote, as you can see, is pretty basic, which is fine, that's not a problem. My main issue with this is that I can't actually flick through the tracks. Um, I can flick through the tracks, but if I want to come out of a particular album, so if I'm in an album and I want to go back a stage, for an album selection, it won't let me do that. I can only actually skip backwards and forwards. Now, if anybody out there knows a different way of doing this and they're managing to flick through all of their collection, then please let me know because it's very annoying. So, here's a little overview of what we've actually got on the remote. You've got source, because this particular item can be plugged into several sources. Um, I'll turn it around in a second and let you have a look. You've got your volume up and down, and you've got your track skip backwards and forwards. But as I said, I'm not sure how to go back out of an album um, or back out of a genre. Um, at the bottom here, you've got a mute button, so you can press it and, and mute. But let's be honest, no one wants to mute music. Um, and you've got your play and pause in the centre. Let you have a little look around it. It's it's quite slick looking, quite basic, and to be honest, it doesn't look out of place in the kitchen, which is good because it's uh, you know quite neat and tidy. <coughs> Let's flip the unit round so you can have a look at the inputs on the back. Okay, so on the back, as you can see, you've got your optical, so you can plug anything optical in. I've not actually done that yet. I've got no need to. This system wasn't bought for a cinema or to be plugged into anything but the iPod. Um, you've got your components, so you can actually run video through it. Uh, again, I'm not exactly fully aware of exactly how that works because I never bought it for that purpose. And you have a upgrade port um, for system upgrades. Okay, so let's get around to what you want to know. I'm not going to turn this thing on and play it because it's just a waste of time when it comes to these sort of systems. Um, there's, there's no point in listening to music over iTunes. It, it's, it's never going to be the sound quality that you actually get from the system. So to give you an idea of what you get from the system. So before you get carried away, it's in my opinion nowhere near as loud as a Zeppelin at all. But what it does offer is in my opinion, a lot better sound quality. It's crisper in, in all genres. If you're listening to hip hop, R&B, classical sounds phenomenal on it. The, the bass on this thing is just mind blowing. It, it, 
it, it's a, the, the sound itself that comes from it is on par with some of the more expensive systems which, I don't, which, I, which I've owned in my time. Now, my last system was a Harman Kardon setup and I was running it through Anthony and Gallo speakers and although this is nowhere near as loud, the actual sound quality it is on par, it, it really is that good. But don't expect to be blowing the socks off your neighbours. It is an iPod dock and it does have plenty of volume, it will fill a room. It fills my kitchen and my living room which are both quite big. Um, but it's it's no it's no window breaker. It's not gonna you, you know you're gonna be holding your ears because they're bleeding because it's so loud. It just isn't like that. Um, but what you do get is fantastic sound quality, and that's my opinion. And but the reason I'm doing this review is every review that I found on this was either in German or it was from the people who make this device. And obviously they're never going to tell you anything bad about it. They're going to tell you exactly what you want to hear, which is that it's fabulous. And it is fabulous but it's not super super loud um, it does have some things which I don't particularly like about it the Bluetooth can be a little bit glitchy you know it does connect and it's fine and it doesn't really drop out but it's still in my opinion a, a glitchy connection similar to what I had on my old um, Pioneer dock now that might be because my house is full of wireless devices and I mean full of them I've got Xboxes running and Nintendo Wii's and, and laptops and you name the device, it's in my house and with like the family and the kids and whatnot, the, the, every device is running so maybe that's a big factor in why the, the signal gets lost every now and again. But as I said, this isn't really a problem for us because we went for the iPod dock. So I'm going to pick the camera up now and let you have a little bit of a closer look at what we've got. So obviously the dock itself does come up, you can lift it off, it, it's the old iPod connector. Now. I've read that you can put the, the adapter on for the lightning and once you've done the adapter for the lightning you can use your iPhone 5 or, or your you know your new devices that are out there which have that particular connector on it. Um, like I said it doesn't really affect us because we have it stuck with that one on it. It does move up and down and it does grip quite well and to be honest once this thing is in there you can kind of work out that it fits so snug compared to the iPhone or my iPhone 5 or my iPhone, uh, the iPod mini which I put on it that it's kind of designed for this to be honest. Okay, on the actual unit itself you've got three buttons on it. Well, four if you include your power button. So at the top you've got a mimic of what's on the, the, the remote. You've got your up down and you've got your source button obviously to flick from um, wireless to Bluetooth, etc., etc., etc. You've got the NAD decal on it, and as we come around the side, you have um, a power button. We all know they work. And as you come around the back, you've got your power, you've got your ports, etc., which I explained earlier on. Around the other side is your cone for your base, and it does really kick out. It's got quite a lot of base for such a small unit. And if you are into bass, in my opinion, this kicks out more than uh, what you get from the Zeppelin. But the sound quality on this, I think, is a lot better than the Zeppelin. And, and I've listened to both. And, you know, realistically, this does fall into that top category of where you'd be looking at something like the R-Cam, uh, R-Cube or the Zeppelin. This blows the R-Cube out of the water. But obviously, the R-Cube's got that bonus of the portability because it's got the battery included. This has no battery in it, which you know for some might be a problem, but for me it's sitting in my kitchen, not a problem. Um, yeah, it, it comes boxed, and all you really get in the box is the cable, which is a long one. Uh, I would probably say it's somewhere between sort of maybe two and a half to three meters long, the power cable that comes with it, which for some people, it's kind of important. You know, if you're trying to run it somewhere, you definitely need a longer cable, it saves you putting an extension on it. Um, comes with the, the remote, which as you can see I showed you earlier on and it comes with a quick start guide other than that there's not really a lot in the box but then again there's not really a lot, lot to know about it it's pretty straightforward when you connect to Bluetooth there's no codes to be put in or anything like that you literally just select the Bluetooth on your phone click it, it connects and then you play your music and, and like with most of the 
iPhone, I, I, Apple iPhones and, and whatnot, you get a little triangle in the corner, you press it and the NAD system will appear on it. You click it and it connects most of the time. But as I said, I've got a feeling that might be to do with all of the devices that I've run in my home. So I hope this review has been informative and you know, I hope it's given you what you need. If you, if you need to ask any questions, just pop us a line at the bottom in the comments um, you know, to get an idea of uh, anything you might want to know about it, but I might have missed out of this review. Like I said, the only reason I've done this review is because I couldn't find one in English from um, a Joe Bloggs who's just reviewing a system. All I could find was a German ones or from the manufacturers, which, let's be honest, you're never going to get a true taste of what a device is like. But for me, this at the moment is probably the pinnacle of docking systems out there. It really is something special. The sound quality is phenomenal. And apart from the quirks, which I explained earlier on, I would highly, highly, highly recommend the NAD Viso 1. Thank you for watching.